All right. So what an honor. Um, how's everybody doing today? It's past our midterm, so the students are like, can I say fairly retired? <laughs> Hold on a second. Somebody's knocking on the door. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the best. Sorry, you didn't see that. <laughs> you didn't see that either. <laughs> uh, you just say my butt. Just, just saying. Oh, when it's recording, I always say I'm gonna delete that out, and then I never delete anything out. But you know what? Let me do this. Tap this. So I'm also going to pin. Whoops, no, that's not gonna work. I'm going to pin all the speakers. I think that's what makes sense so people can see. Um, all you know, the whole panel, and uh, I guess I should pin myself and my face. Now, I want to pin, pin multiple people. Let me pin multiple, you know, maybe if I made the correct. I know what I'm doing, y'all. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I do this a lot. And then, of course, when I wanted to, don't replace the pin. I just want to, ah, well, maybe I won't let me. Okay, never mind. And that's that you're not important, Tim, but I'm going to unpin you. Ah. I'll, just, I'll just do speaker mode. <laughs> it'll, it'll record fine. Just if you're not speaking, just please mute out. Because otherwise, the recording gets a little, you know, a little janky, and I'm offering this as extra credit for um, for the students who can't be here, right? So, um, yeah. So I asked you how you were doing, that I won't shut up. Okay, how's everybody doing? Thumbs up if you're doing great, even if it's ah, oh, yeah. Ruby's. <laughs> Let me see. Hold up. Let me see you. Welcome, welcome. That's all right. We can just share the screen. I was going to, that's okay. There's never enough hours in the day, you know. I had all these plans and things I wanted to do, but what's most important, I think, is that we have a good democratic conversation. So, hey, uh, Ambria, do you have that link for the, um, the early voting, the Chai March 23? bit.ly by chance. If anybody has that, can you please put that in the chat for me? If not, I can go on my socials. Is it, do you mean by, by that? Oh, the, that'll work too. That'll work too. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, that actually, cause I'm going to just talk about that briefly and then maybe partic participate. Uh, a participant, yeah. Enable closed captions. Perfect. Thank you. Whoever did that. All right, um, so glad you all are doing well. Welcome again. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Okay, we're at 35, yay. And I'm sorry, my, my, uh, my okay, I'll, I'll stop arguing about the tech. You know how it is here sometimes with technology, you know, something always hiccups up. But we, we have such a tremendous opportunity. And I think it's important to have these kinds of events so students are informed. I, I've been actually a little bit shocked at how many students don't even know we have a mayoral election and not to throw shade on them because I know they're very busy with their academics, but we need to talk about why it's important to vote. And the, the talk was called, um, can, revolution, can voting be a revolutionary act? And for me, it's a simple yes, but how can it be revolutionary? How can we be uh, more engaged? And more importantly, as students, what are your main concerns that you're going to bring to whoever gets elected, right? And again, we're not electioneering, we're not saying who you should vote for. There are definitely important races happening, not just merely, but in other manic situations. Um, and again, why is it important just theoretically to get active? And I'm going to turn it over to our wonderful associate dean. Is that, is that did I get it right? That's me. And uh, Joe no. Hinton, who has been a brother, um, former faculty, currently um, associate dean. And you can find him on the second floor with the student activities um, and clubs and whatnot. Please, thank you, whoever helped me out there. Hit, take it away, Joe. Yeah, thank you, Hesu. And I'm really excited to um, hear the conversation today. and. You know, an, a title as provocative as the one we have today about a voting being a revolutionary act, I think is really one that our namesake, Harold Washington, would have celebrated us coming together to discuss, uh, recognizing we don't do, uh, you know, electioneering, obviously, but that um, just becoming informed and, and using your voice and, and you, know, you know, me sitting in the student activity suite, I get to hear a lot of students say, well, should we get together to text for this candidate or should we get together to make calls or what if we got out and got active? And so, you know, the, the conversations may not be top of mind for all students, but they're there and they're, they're growing and they're, there's just a, a really broad excitement, I think, for this kind of 
of work and thinking and activism to continue to grow. Um, you know, our, our generation that's, uh, you know, the traditional age college students right now um, see the world differently than Gen Xers like me or, or, you know, other generations in our society have seen it. So I'm really excited to hear about what matters, um, what motivates them to vote, what motivates them to get active. And I'm really excited to see our, our lovely uh, array of speakers that we'll have present today um, to motivate us and make us ask questions of ourselves and uh, really think about how this revolutionary act happens. So um, yeah, thanks thanks for letting me join in and I'm really excited to hear from everyone. Awesome, and guests, if you could please just briefly introduce yourself. So we have the lovely, okay, so I, I just, I met Ambria Taylor via Facebook. Um, she's a wonderful human being and an educator, but if you could just say a little bit more about yourself and then um, you have about seven to 10 minutes max because I do want to save time for people to ask questions and engage in these topics. Take it away, Ambria. Hi, thank you so much. And thank you guys for having me. Um, you know, this topic is really near and dear to my heart. Um, and, and that's sort of the topic of young people voting, students voting. Um, you know, I'm a teacher. Most of my time teaching has been spent doing middle school social studies. Um, and, uh, you know, so obviously young people voting is important to me, but I've also run for office before. Um, so there's a lot of overlap for me here. And since I'm just sort of kicking today's event off, I'm not going to be really making the argument um, that voting is a revolutionary act. I'll leave that to other people. But what I want to do is um, provide some numbers and some data to kind of lay the groundwork here for the other people that are going to be speaking today, because I think I could um, prove a couple points here just through the numbers. So um, I'm going to dive right in. Why should young people vote? Um, let's look at the numbers. So we just had a municipal election here in Chicago, February 28th, and there's going to be a runoff election um, on April 4th. Um, early voting is happening right now. You can go vote. Um, for the 28th, for the initial round, we had 507,852 ballots cast. So that's a little over 500,000 people who voted in this election. Um, oops, I was, I, I meant to do a, like, who knows what the population of Chicago is, but then I just moved to the next slide and gave away the answer. So <laughs> our population is, um, about 2,600,000, it's actually closer to 700,000. I should have rounded it differently. It's about 2.7 million people. Um, now let's look at this breakdown of, of how many people vote. So the total population of Chicago is 2.7 million people. And I, I, I did my best to divide up these little lines so that they're representative um, and, and you know correct in relation to each other. Um, there are only 1.5 million people who are registered to vote in Chicago. Now, not everyone who lives in Chicago is qualified to vote in Chicago. Some people are here for school and don't want to change their registration. I argue that you should consider it um, and vote where you live. Um, but for whatever reason, they don't want to vote here, but they're registered elsewhere. Um, there's also people who are uh, deprived of the vote uh, because they're immigrants or because they have, you know, other other reasons that they're not legally allowed to vote. But I really doubt that it's almost half of the population of Chicago. So you can see that out of all the people that live here, you know, uh, only a little over half are even registered to vote. And then of those people that are registered to vote, we only have about half a million people that actually voted in this election. So less than half of the people that are registered, it was around 30%, I think a little, uh, somewhere around the neighborhood of 32%. Now, what I wanna talk about is I wanna break it down even more. So you can see we're breaking it down, but let's talk about of these people that vote, who is voting in that small number of people um, that voted, who picks, our political representatives. Now, municipal elections is alder people. Alder people represent different parts of the city. It's broken up into wards. Each ward gets an alder person who sits on city council and makes decisions on, on city policy for us. We vote on them and we vote on the mayor 
in a municipal election. Obviously, those people have a really big direct impact on our lives because every policy and law we have is is carried out and created by city council if it's on the city level. Yep. So who is picking the people who do that? Um, so I decided to break this down by age. I want to I want to talk to you about this. Let's take a look here in this election. We're using this election as an example, but I want to stress that these patterns generally carry right these patterns generally apply to our county elections to our state elections to our federal elections and those people pick our supreme court judges so everything about our society this pattern holds on who is choosing the representatives that are carrying out uh the creation and maintenance of all the structures of our society so age 65 plus accounts for four accounted in this past election for 42% of the votes. 45 to 64 was 32% of the total votes. 35 years old to 44 years old was 13% of the votes. 25 to 34 years old was 11% of the votes. And 18 to 24, you guys, college age students, you know, with exceptions, I went to college very late, college age students, is 2% of the total votes. Now you might see these other little numbers I added at the ends over here. 65, people 65 and older make up for about, now I, I use the census, you know, and the, the categories are slightly different, like the age ranges. So I had to estimate, but I got close at least, just being transparent about how I did the data here. 14% um, of Chicago is people age 65 and over. About 11% of Chicago is aged 18 to 24. So comparing 42% to 2%, this is about, these people make up about the same amount of the percentage of people in Chicago. Yet the people 65 and older are deciding our elections, even though they're a small fraction of our society. And I want you to remember, we've already boiled it down. Okay? We've already boiled it down to, uh, I can't get this to unmaximize. Here we go. We've already boiled it down, right? We're we're not talking about the total population. We're talking about out of the people that voted. We're looking at the percentages of the people that voted. So 2% of the people that voted is very small. 2% of the total population of Chicago is nothing. So basically young people are taking the opportunity or taking zero, almost zero opportunity right. to voice who they want our leaders to be. They're basically non-existent as far as the political influence of their vote. And that's not because they're a small percentage of our population. Um, so I'm gonna leave it at that, but that all that is to show in numbers how important it is that we increase voting among college age students. But you can also see, as I showed you, the amount of people voting goes down, 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 down. It's getting yep. to the point where even people 45 and under are hardly voting. People yeah, 50 sure. and up basically are, are deciding who our representatives are at every single level, even though they only make up a small part of the population. And I'll end it there. So you have a question. I don't know if you have time. Uh, De Dennis wants to know where the data source is from. If you could put that in the chat or we can get that later. Um, thank you so yeah. much. That was cool and very, I, I, that was excellent. I, I know I talk a lot, sorry. This is why I love teaching you. Okay, up next we have my mentor. And I, I met Barbara through activism when we were fighting for COVID safety, both here in the city colleges and also in CPS because I am a mother of two CPS children. Uh, Dr. Barbara Norman though is a jewel. It's a huge honor to have her here. And uh, if you wanna just briefly introduce yourself sister and you have 10 minutes, go ahead, Dr. Norman. Uh, thank you so very much. Um, I, will, I will use the 10 minutes just talking about myself, but no, <laughs> I won't do that. <laughs> the, the title is revolutionary. And given I'm in that senior group and I'm the most senior, I am a revolutionist. 
And uh, the, I want to thank you for inviting me and the information that Amber has given and working with Tony Johnston in the past. And I'm a former chair of the local 1600 Chicago City College Union many, many years ago. And also, let me, one of my probably greatest accomplishment was that I was part of the movement to elect the Hill Washington as mayor. And when you spent, uh, when you mentioned Hill Washington, you were referring to the college, of course, uh, not to Hill Washington, the mayor, because you know he did not play. And uh, from that experience, gave a lot of opportunity to work with other candidates who are running for office. Uh, I don't want to go down all my lists. I'm a double doctor's degree, prepared public health, ob gyne mental, uh, maternal child health, mental health are basically some of my priorities and research. And um, uh, Ambria, you had some of your data. You took my thunder out of my first presentation when I looked at the number. But I'm going to make a few changes only because I just downloaded the Board of Election new numbers after the mail-in ballots and all of that. And it comes out when we talk about our young people. Um, let, let me first preface my statement. So while you're putting this in the chat, and if anybody recording this, I want to make it clear. I am not supporting or endorsing or it's not a, my presentation is not to identify any candidates. Is that clear? My purpose is to give the information, the importance of the movement, uh, how we can make a difference and flip those numbers from the young people in, in, up to the elderly. Uh, with that, I don't want to say the elderly, let's say most senior. Uh, this is an incredible opportunity for our young people to really set the trajectory of the future of the city of Chicago. A couple of numbers I do want to change most recently is that I did download for the um, that population group between the ages of 25 to 34. I found out they had the most registered voters, 370,000 voters. However, the number of turnout, that's where we have our problem. We have the registered voters, excuse me. Our biggest problem, when you look at the number of actual registered voters in the city of Chicago, for February the 28th, we had 1 million, remember what you said, register, but of that number, as you said, less than 50% to turn out. That's the area that we have to really focus on and target. You're good, Barbara. Keep going, sister. We can hear you just fine. Okay, that's, I'm going to have to call this a doctor's office for my aunt. But um, I wanted also to point out, I'm going to leave the numbers alone. When you look at 18 to 24, they were, like you said, less uh 2.7%. When you look, the perp for me, the purpose of my presentation on this for the city colleges today is to emphasize that currently, and Tony, you can help me with this, there's close to over like 80,000 students enrolled in city colleges, over 5,000 faculty, staff, and employees. That in and of itself is close to 30%, if not more, of the number of potential votes that we have out there. And when we talk about young people, I have, remember, as a, as a senior, 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 I have second, third generation younger nieces and nephews under me. For my experience, we are raised in politics. We mm -hmm. ate it, we drank it, we sat at the table from the time I was 10, 11, 12 years old. That has a lot to do in formulating our behaviors in our involvement in these activities. During my early days in grammar school and high school, I don't know what they do now in the curriculum, but here's an opportunity where we can reestablish civics in the, in the curriculum for young people to be exposed to it early. If they don't know it, they haven't seen it, they haven't heard it, they don't see the interest in it. When you look at the population age group of 50 or maybe probably 30, 35, you notice as you get older, your involvement become greater because you have more at risk. We talk about job opportunity, we're talking about social security, we're talking about benefits, we're talking about safety. When you're young, I was looking at the numbers, millennials and gen, uh, generation X, or is it X now or Z? So what do you do when you run out of alphabet? X, Y, Z? Do you start over <laughs> again Z1 or ZA or ZB? 
So when we label young people or and we label people, we function in those categories. I believe all of us on this call right now and those who are on phone, we have the greatest opportunity to turn this whole projector of the city around. Another thing, let me point out, when I talk about historical, and I, I'm 82, ever since I, I have voted every election that I can walk, talk, breathe, breathe and see. If we get that same involvement in the lower ever, younger uh, uh, level age group, they too will become so committed and compassionate with it. So unless it's our, it's our responsibility, just like I said, my area is infant mortality, mothers and babies, we start teaching at an early age. You can't wait till the child is almost a teenager and young adult and encourage them to tell you why you shouldn't vote. We should start there early. The parents need to be involved, grandparents. Okay, I'm not gonna go too much by the time it's up. However, I will stick with some recommendations. It's the fact that we need to start, <clears throat> excuse me, community group organizations. I know we raised in the church. So a lot of our learning started early age in the church. We don't have that now, but we do have community groups and organizations in which we can start encouraging young people to participate. We also can encourage groups to start holding office where young people can be elected to run for office, president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, economic, if they don't know. They don't know the duties and responsibilities of those different roles. If they started in grammar school, even in eighth grade, seven to eighth grade. So then when they move in high school and definitely in the community colleges, it could even be a requirement. I don't know if you can mandate it, but I think our, our student government group can certainly emphasize it. We need to get more of our elected officials involved and in coming to the student group activity, share with them what they're doing. Students don't know. They have the they have the strongest voice. As I mentioned, just with City College, talking about 80,000 students, mm -hmm. even if we can get 50% of them to come out to vote for the four, for whoever they choose to vote for, either candidate, the, the impact they will have is not only revolutionary. My, 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 my philosophy is the student power. They are empowered to make a change and make a difference. When people feel they are participating and belong, you get greater participation. And I'll close now, stop with that and be available for questions. Uh, I'm really excited about this event. I hope we can take it from campus to campus. I hope we can between now and the, the I know I think students go break, I understand like April the 3rd. So we need to be doing something every day. We should have been doing this. And we also need to be doing this, getting ready for the fall election. For as long as I can breathe, every year there's an election. Why do we wait till the time to start getting active? But anyway, I, today is, thank you. Dr. Norman, thank you. Um, I really do mean, uh, we're so privileged to have Barbara here. She's a powerhouse and um, so politically active just amazing and clear in her analysis. So I, I thank you for those remarks. Up next, we have my union president, uh, President Tony Johnston, who is just a phenomenal force to be reckoned with and has been doing a great job of really promoting legislation for the youth, not just for the union members. And maybe he'll speak to that, but uh, take it away, Tony. All right, thank you very much. And um, as everyone's mentioned here, uh, this is a great, uh, opportunity to talk about an important topic, and um, I'm very happy to be part of it. Um, my name is Tony Johnston. I'm the president of Cook County College Teachers Union. We represent faculty, staff, and security in the city colleges, but we also represent faculty and staff in the suburban uh, community colleges in Cook County. Mm -hmm. um, Prior to being president, uh, most of my career was at Truman College, where uh, for, for a long time I was the coordinator of tutoring services, but I also taught as an adjunct and full-time instructor as well. Um, and uh, my, my background, my academic background is history, which I'll, uh, uh, you'll see when, when I mention a few things here in a couple minutes. Um, the, the title, as has already been mentioned, is very provocative, and it's a great uh, title of the event. Uh, why, why is student voting a revolutionary act? Um, I think from what you've already heard from the previous two speakers is that it would be unexpected. Um, 
uh, youth voting is is has been low traditionally, um, and um, uh, it would be revolutionary for for that to expand to the point where um, young people are a, an electoral force, um, mm. and that's very much what we want. Uh, we want our young voters to to be able to 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 engage in the political process and uh, to be part of the political process because um, so much of what happens in your life is affected by it. Right. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of people, and not just young people, a lot of adults don't see it. Um, uh, the, the statistics that Ambria Taylor uh, gave, um, th that isn't just youth vote. I mean, it's, um, uh, there were a, an enormous amount of adult registered voters that did not vote on the right. 28th. And uh, we very much would like that to change on April 4th and have many more people voting. Um, it's important to remember, and again, this has been mentioned before and it is important, so I'll mention it again, is that um, uh, being in uh, vote, just the voting act itself is important, but a part of it is being informed and um, uh, participation beyond the elections. And just to, this is where my, my history teacher comes out. Um, if you take a look and see how we got to have this voting age, um, it's the 26th Amendment. It was actually passed in 1971. And um, uh, you know, what, what essentially happened, you could People focus on the Vietnam War, and that was certainly important, but you could even go back to World War II when uh, President Roosevelt actually dropped the age of recruitment to go into the war from 21 to 18. Mm -hmm. And so from the beginning, young people were saying, well, if I'm old enough to be recruited and to fight in a war, shouldn't I be old enough to, to, to vote? And um, it really, this this movement really took off during the 1960s and early 1970s when people were very concerned and some fought uh, against the war in Vietnam. Uh, and uh, many of those people also fought for civil rights. And many of those people uh, fighting in the civil rights movement were also uh, 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 under the age of 21. Many were mm -hmm. 18, 19, 20. And uh, fighting for the rights to vote um, when they themselves did not have that right, um, and so this this led to an enormous amount of political pressure. It didn't just happen overnight because they said, "Hey, we'd really like to have voting rights." Uh, they had to fight for it, and um, and that's what happened when uh, the this pressure of the civil rights movement and the anti-war yes. movement. Um, uh, they were able to change the 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 make the amendment and uh, change it from uh, 21 to 18 uh, as a voting age. So um, it's a it's a perfect example of how these these people who fought to make this change were not just there because they wanted to vote or could vote, but they had to participate in in the process to make it happen. Um, and so you have a chance to do that uh, on April 4th. Um, just to give you an example, since this is out, uh, this is focused on Harold Washington here, um, there are two super centers in, um, in downtown, uh, one's on Washington and the other's at Clark and Lake that you can easily go to. Um, Truman College and Olive Harvey both are early voting sites that you can go to and you can also find out about your early vote early voting site um, in your ward. Um, I'll just end with you know going back to you know participation as as a as a, a patriotic act and you could say a revolutionary act. Um, in this last contract negotiation that we just recently ratified, we were able to get an agreement uh, called the City Colleges for the Common Good. And what the ultimate goal is to 
expand the community school model uh, uh, in, in, in the CPS, it's called Sustainable Community Schools. Currently, there's 20 of them. And we want to try to expand that model to the city colleges. And essentially what this does is it would make these schools and eventually the city colleges um, hubs, not just of education, but for social services, for people to get uh, to find out how to get affordable housing, how to get childcare, um, uh, to get mental health services that are that are needed. Um, and so we the first step is we're going to be doing uh, uh, we're going to be setting up a committee to to uh, to create a community needs assessment around each city college, each of the seven city colleges. And this is where we need student involvement. Um, we need to know from you all what what do you need um, to, to become a successful student. Um, we know that, you know, we're, we're educators and we provide academic support and everything you need at the college, but there may be things such as the things I mentioned before, affordable housing, childcare needs, mm -hmm. mental health is issues. Um, having that student input is necessary for this program that we want to do, City Colleges for the Common Good, to be successful. And so if any of you are interested in doing anything like that, uh, we are getting started right now, actually. And you can uh, contact me. You can contact Hezu because she's going to be on the committee as well. And I'll put my contact information in the, in the chat. So I'll end there and again, say thank you uh, for the opportunity and uh, please uh, get out and vote. Thank you, Tony. And just to add on that, onto that, um, oh, did I, can you hear me? Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm like on two devices. Um, another thing that we're working on through the union, through the Amer American Federation of Teachers is to restart the mutual aid fund that we had here a few years back. And that would be direct support to students. And so, the, the thing is, is that we can't have a community college for the common good without getting your input. Because Tony and I may have good ideas about what you need, but you know what you need, right? Um, money's easy. Everybody needs money, right? For whatever. But I do think that uh, we could do much better in terms of not only offering wraparound services, but being cooperative in how we do these things. So when that proposal came on the contract, for me, it was like mana from heaven. I'm telling you, I was really excited about it. We got some language, not as much as we wanted. But if we organize together, this is something that we could win for you, right? And so really, um, I'm, I'm on room 629. I'll put my email in the chat. But by all means, get a hold of both of us because the more the more collectivized, the better and the more success we will have. So um, thank you, Tony, for those remarks. That's why Tony is my president. So up next, we have Amazing. the honor, huge honor of having a student government association representative who has been putting some good resources in the chat. We have Luis. And I'm forgetting Basurto, that Luis Basurto, if you could say just a little about, about yourself, maybe SGA, and why you think voting can be a, a revolutionary act. All right. Thank you for the introduction, and thank you all for being here today and for participating. And to introduce myself, I'll pretty much, I'm a transfer third year student here at, at Harold Washington. I joined the Student Government Association like a few months back, as soon as I started um just to make a bigger impact and i love everything that they've been doing so far it's like an incredible young group of, of men and women that just you know do everything to try to make the school better and to also appeal to other students whether it's through groups and activities and different uh you know uh whether it's fundraising or just providing like anything that the students students may need and First of all, I'll also introduce myself, my story as like a vote as a voter. I've I've got the privilege of being able to volunteer at a nonprofit called uh, Chicago Chicago Votes, and I don't know if you all have heard of it. Mm -hmm. That pretty much that started like around my my first year at at City College. I kind of bounced around at Daily Malcolm X, but at Malcolm X, I actually was able to be privilege to meet one of the main the main chair chairman that that um that pretty much works with 
Chicago votes. And their main thing is like kind of what we're all doing right now is trying to appeal to not only young people voting, but also like the acts of voting and how we can make an impact on the greater on the greater society on how to actually be able to move and move forward and progress with whether it's um, creating or advocating for different laws or also just, you know, increasing the voter turnout for the youth in the, in the future. And so I was really privileged to be able to get introduced in that way because I helped um, in th various different events, like a few of them would be actually taking young um, students that couldn't register yet, but they were in middle, between middle school and high school and taking them to the 2018 midterm, um, it was a, it was like, um, like a forum where we had a different uh, mayor elect, elect, um, different people trying to forgot the whole group of it, but we had like around six or seven, um, mayoral candidates that were able to take, uh, questions from them. And it was just one of the kind of like a turning point where I saw like, where no matter the age, young people really do have a voice and needs that they need to be filled. But a lot of times they don't have the voice or they don't have the, uh, the ability to input on the actual, the actual subjects that they may want to see in the future to be changed or even to be kept the same. So at that point, I was like, you know, I really need to um, crank it up and be able to provide more than I've, I've been able to in the past. And it was like maybe like 13, 14 year olds asking hardball questions that a lot of them really wouldn't have expected from schools, from student, uh, students from schools on the south side and back of the yards, for example, where they really didn't, didn't know that these needs and these opinions uh, could be addressed by you know young people like this so again i'd like to uh thank uh tony for um all the different points that he spoke about i think the student's responsibility for stewardship as a subset of the population that is it's pretty much essential for democracy where we we not only as young people but kind of like um like um uh, i forgot the, the exact name where she said like even the older 30 40 year olds are starting to lack in that way where they're not turning out as much as they can be or they could have, could have been in the past so um so we need to like i said we play a pivotal role as to what the future may hold for our future generations and a few names that uh that kind of to me came in mind that play into this or i'm not sure if um any of you are familiar with Michael Schwerner, Andrew Goodman, and James Cheney, which were three civil rights workers that were actually killed in Mississippi in 1964 for helping African Americans register to vote. And that's one of the things that their death um, helped people to actually um, propel the Civil Rights Act to be passed later on in that year. And similar movements eventually led to the passage of the 19th Amendment and the 26th Amendment, for example, that kind of we are able to have in our, you know, in our lifetimes and in our future generations to be able to use to, to push forward and use advocacy in voting. And to talk about my experience, like what has changed my mindset, my perspective and et cetera, was talking about what I need to do as a community member and the questions that I need to, I need to have or to ask to represent the people who haven't been able to be represented in our past. And basically in trying to be able to lead students into voting, but not only to voting, but being an advocate to push their friends, their family, whoever they know who can be able to vote to pretty much let them know like, hey, this is a lot more important than you may, you may realize. And so thank you again, I, Dr. Estrada and all of you for participating and one of my major purpose on this presentation today is kind of going on the topic of why voting is bigger than bigger than me and bigger than than something that I thought before that where I thought it was just like well maybe I could get one or two people to vote but maybe my my kind of my opinion changed where I was like how can I get one or two three three people to be able to be like me to maybe get two or three people and 
you know, just through like the the um, mathematics, if we get two or three or four or five people and we all kind of set out to say, hey, you know, maybe you can push push this agenda forward and get more people to not only register, but actually be able to vote for the midterms elections, for the runoffs, for the presidential mm -hmm. elections. So that's not just a one and done thing where they they got it off their chest because I remember when I voted, I was like, I was I was the one helping them to be able to register and take them to the polling places. But when I stepped up to the ballot, I was like, like heck, it's a lot more names and a lot more uh, positions that I thought like I was like I didn't was not really too familiar with. So I really made the made had the mindset where I had need to not only learn more about the you know whether it's comptroller or the the different uh, various like um like like the various positions of as government that they that they hold I also need to be into the current events where it's like what's going on in these different communities and to address what different people may need it's some people from the south side may not have the exact same needs mm -hmm. that they have on the north side communities so with with that being said I feel like one of the more important quotes that came to me um, and it's also like a metaphor from um, a poem from Langston Hughes was like kind of like where you want to have a seat at the table mm -hmm. and also like a very, very newer one that kind of came into terms of like you, you can't or you're not able to make have a seat at the table. Sometimes you have to build your own table. So Amen, that's, brother. Uh -huh. that's something that we need to really do. So, um, you know, as a position of uh, as a member of a group that really needs to make decisions, we need to try to whether it's be at this table or that table, have a seat into what, you know, into decisions that are placed onto our lives. Because like I said, it's not really for me, it's for my potential future kids, for my parents, my sisters, my everybody that, you know, whether they make the decision to vote or not, it still affects them, you know, nonetheless. And a few things that I say basically on, um, like I'm, I'm lucky that I was able to um, to participate in Chicago votes because that kind of gave me all of kind of like you don't know what you you don't know what you don't know. That's right. Mm -hmm. When I was able to go in there, I was like, you know, this is this is a not only a business, but this is like something that affects every person under the sun, and we really need to make a concerted effort to not only, um, like I said, push people to the vote. But make it a bigger issue and you know kind of tell them like young people don't really they don't really think as uh kind of unfortunate but they're not really as future oriented as they should be so we can kind of make them say like hey well you're not going to see the fruits of your labor mm -hmm. you know it's, it's stuff it's a process it's a two four eight year process but really re when we really start now the in the future the results may be you know astounding to what we may be able to bring just like for example the two, 2008 elections where we had almost like a 54 percent use right. and we can make that you know come in, come into fruition like how we did how we were able to before with the we can and the obama campaign i feel like we can have a lot more say into what what we're able to you know like we we just want to we don't want to just tell people vote just because right. it matters. We tell them why it matters and why it matters to you in particular. So um, I know a, a lot of y'all will get into like kind of what what is on the ballots and what like kind of different dates. So I don't want to um, get ahead of myself, but just to to reiterate um, that I think she said before someone um early voting has opened up for the runoffs since yesterday. So you're you're able to, whether you show up to the polling place or, or early, early registrate, or even if you do a mail-in ballot that has opened up. So I think we really need to take advantage of our time and be able to kind of, instead of, you know, pro, um, I won't say procrastinate, but wait until when the poll, polling places are lined up and stuff, we can just, you know, check that off our checklist as soon as possible because it's really something that's essential not only for this runoff but for future future elections and that's getting like kind of close to my time so uh, um also some things that i wanted to 
talk about that were close to, uh, close to myself were like how um, Rauner in his, in his term closed uh, about like six of the 12 youth mental health facilities, which were located on the South side. And mm -hmm. that's something that, you know, directly affected not only me, but friends and, you know, people that I've been, I was fortunate to be able to be in different youth programs. I don't know if you guys know, become BAM, Becoming a Man. And that's a program which really helped me and, you know, people of color that were in my, in my schools that we had no idea that there were so many programs or groups that not only wanted you to be there and sit there, but just listen to every every little issue, anything that you wanted to talk about. So when we elect people that have those, those our interests in mind, then our, our life just gets better as a whole. So I think that kind of capitalizes on why my, well, my purpose on this presentation today is that voting is a lot bigger than myself and kind of to say that I can reiter reiterate the point that we really had to have be able to have a seat at a table and make make that true in the future. So like whether it's build our own table, make our own groups, kind of like how we're doing today to mm -hmm. be able to plan for the future. And even if we don't get a big turnout, we can still make plans and make events or community circles so that we are able to push a few more people to be able to say, hey, I voted during the midterms or hey, I voted during the 2024 elections. Mm -hmm. and that's about my time so thank you all thank you thank you so yeah. much that was wonderful i'm sorry i'm gonna cut you off you're getting a lot of applause mm -hmm. by the lovely yeah. Dr. Roman, a lot of accolades yeah. so just uh for people who came in late just to remind everybody we are recording this session if you want to change your name or turn off your computer i'd be happy to speak your question or you're welcome to unmute and ask questions and last but certainly not least we have tim noonan funny story i met tim noonan when i was working the february 28th i took a personal day which i you know, perfectly capable of taking and can. Um, and I was working different wards and I ran into Tim because he was being endorsed by our union and now he's no longer running. So he's not a candidate, just FYI. And it turns out that Tim's son is in one of my classes. So I was like, you know, that song, it's a small world after all. It's a small world after all. But mm -hmm. Tim is an amazing community activist. Sadly, he did not win, but, you know, planting seeds. Like, I think even just this concept of voting is much more than just a moment and we can build a lot so i love that i love that from the speaker that spoke earlier and and uh i'm sure tim has more wisdom to offer us but please tim take it away i appreciate it thank you so much um and, and thank you for inviting me to to join you today and and it was wonderful Luis, Luis was a wonderful speaker and he's very yes. articulate yes. it was really really great to hear especially young people speaking and, yes. and i know it's probably the worst thing somebody young hate, hates to hear there's like young people it's like oh that sounds like you're old. But anyways, <laughs> my background uh, is uh, I do, uh, I'm a computer consultant by trade. Uh, my I focus on FOIA and e-discovery systems for the federal government, and that's transparency is really important to me. Uh, I came, um, I started, uh, I started a lot of my activism when the alder, uh, alderman was trying to close our elementary school for our children. Mm -hmm. And and it was just it was a it was after the 50 schools that were closed and we fought and we kept the school open and it was going to be a disastrous uh, that when, when it was when it was going to happen was going to be disastrous. And then when National Teachers Academy tried to be closed, we fought to keep them open. So schools and youth is very, very important. Uh, it may not seem to that as you go beyond that, but you look back. It is a cornerstone of your learning, a cornerstone of where you begin. The, the germination of your ideas it come from your elementary school and then through your high school and through your college. So not to go much about me because this isn't about me. This is about you. This is about voting. Power is never given. It always has to be taken. You need to be able to take that power. And the way you can take that power is by your vote by voting for who you really believe in, who has shared response, who has shared values with you, are the people that you really want to take 
those decisions that you that that you may not be sitting at that table, but you are sitting at that table when they share the same values with you. So when there is a question about, say, the comment uh, a pro, um, a contract that was supposed to go through and that it was shouted down because they were going to railroad another contract through. So you want to make sure that you have somebody there that's representing you. And, you, and knows your values to be able to make decisions on your behalf. Now, back in um, earlier in 20, back in 2022, the older persons got together and created maps, maps that were defining who their voters are. Now, that doesn't make sense from a standpoint of older people who have a vested interest, who they get to pick their voters are, are making maps, they're carving it up. They're, they're carving up the city in order to make sure they stay in power. What we need to do is we need to take the power. And yes, that may sound revolutionary, but it's your power. This is your time, this is your city. You know, a lot of people that are, um, that say, you know, we saw the stats about how the older people voted. Now, looking at the trajectory of life, they're only looking at, you know, from themselves, from that standpoint, at 65 and beyond, that's a lot less they're looking at. Now, when you're 18 and you're looking at how you want your city, how you want to see your future to move forward, you want to see to make sure you carve that path. And uh, you may not be the person running. You, you, What you need to do is identify where your values exist and then find that person. Or if you can't find that person, and Barack Obama said, if you've got a problem with government, pick up a clipboard. So get to get get that clipboard or get that person into office that you think that could make and help you realize your dreams because you're standing on the shoulders of your elders who have come here. Immigrants have come I'm a first generation uh American and I'm the, I'm in the immigrants of generation after generation that have made, have survived that brought me here today to speak to you. So I I feel a real strong passion in regards to this isn't just my message it's generations of messages the generations who my message is going through so i really encourage the importance of voting because there are there are forces out there and i don't want to make it sound like some cabal or anything but there are forces out there that do not want you to vote there are there are forces out there that didn't want women to vote. There are forces out there that didn't want uh, African Americans to vote. There are people out here that are trying to uh, to restrict the vote. You know, there's there's these mailboxes and there's these different uh, crackpot ideas about how your vote isn't going to count or your vote isn't that important. Your vote is very important. Your vote is your voice. Your vote is your revolution. So I believe that when you when you try to get um, when people are trying to prevent you from voting it, there's a darn good reason why they're doing that. They're trying to take you out of the room, away from the table and say, we got this taken care of, don't you worry about it. You know, and then and it won't be them that are gonna be represented at the table. They're gonna be large donors. They're gonna be other people's of power and it's gonna be their own ambition that's going to be at the table. It's not gonna be your voice. So when you, when you go and think about what I feel like doing on April 4th, consider going voting because it's really important and it's because it's it doesn't may seem like it is um uh it may seem like it is going to be something that that is not important but you are forging the path of not only for your family and but for your family's family going beyond and not only you're standing on the shoulders of your elders you are looking forward for your future and the future of your children and the future of what you want that future to be. You wanna see that light. You wanna see and go towards what you think is to be right and just. There are there are rules out here that we're talking about. Uh, Ambria mentioned about denying the right to vote that some people don't have the right to vote. Now you think about when incarcerated people do not have the right to vote. They are under the thumb of the politicians and you couldn't think of another group that could possibly require their vote vote because they're subjected to it 24 hours a day, every minute of the day. That's a, that's a group that does not have a right to vote. Now, there are groups of, of, of that are uh, of immigrants and they're trying to prevent them and have them like IDs and uh, 
and, and, and the homeless people who are also subjected to the same sort of stuff. There are so many groups that they're trying to slice and slice and slice these groups away and come to a core of who they knew they are gonna, they're going to vote for. And the people want to keep their jobs. They want to keep their jobs because they want that status quo to move forward. Here in the 19th Ward, there has been a, uh, there has been a group of when the alderman came, becomes in a power, he has an assistant, and then the assistant becomes in power. That's been going on since 1935. So that's the reason why I got in this race. I said, enough, this is enough. We need to make a change. Now, I may not be, well, obviously, I wasn't the right person because I didn't win, but, um, but, I, but I do know that change is necessary. Change is very important for us to, to move forward. Because that's what progress is. Progress is change. So I, I, I won't keep up much, much of your time, but I do want to say students are our future and your voice is your vote. So please um, start the revolution or, or continue the revolution. So thank you. Woo! Fire, Tim. That was beautiful. <laughs> See, there's a reason Tim and I hit it off and I just met him that one time, but beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> So a lot of thank you speakers. This was amazing, super inspiring, definitely going to circulate the talks. So now is the time when we have question and answers. We have about 23 minutes. If you want to stay five extra, I'm not going to say no. Please remember that you are being recorded if you want to change the image on your camera or change your name. Um, does anybody have any questions? Because we also, I also want to thank the activists that are here. We have uh, Lynette Sims. We have uh, Bridget White, who was here. I think she may have left. And we have also, uh, she's still here, uh, Oscar uh, or T's who may want to speak too, um, but who wants to ask a question or you're getting a lot of props, amazing. Yo, on the reels, Tim, you maybe didn't win this time, but we're planting seeds, brother. So I'm rooting for you for next time. You know, um, anybody have questions? Joe, you also have some great ideas? No, oh, thank you, Lynette, anytime. Oh my, I hope I didn't kill it. So, okay, Nor Barbara, go ahead. You you got uh, uh, to. First, of all, I want to commend you on the on the um, forum. I think it's excellent, very informative. I think your timing is good. Uh, hopefully, you know we, you can take this on the the show on the roll. Uh, the information is so valuable. I want to address this issue about young people participation and feeling empowered. You know, uh, so I can't remember whether whether. Uh, well, Timmy said this, or Tony, or or or, uh, or the earlier you. But young people, I believe, want to be involved. I really believe that their non-involvement is not because of choice. Many of them really don't truly understand the process. Um, and, and 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 if we could do some kind of way of help developing partnerships or groups, starting it up early, even like now. Uh, it, um, April 4th in a couple of weeks. However, we still got to get ready for the fall elections, upcoming election, midterm election. So this effort is not just for Chicago now, but it should be spread out through all the schools. That's another reason why it is important about the candidates who are elected, who represent education. My thing is education, public health, and of course, research. And we can teach young people younger when they're young to help develop those safe uh, behaviors and learn to be. You can decrease the cost of sitting in the jail where you rather spend more money or keeping children, and young people housed in prison rather than putting the money up front with mothers and babies in the early development. But uh, I don't know what the process would be. I know Tony been over to his colleges, you would know better. I know Bridget, you're involved with all the student group and uh, Estrada. And so we have so much talent right here. Where do we begin? How do we start this movement? How to develop an action plan? I'm a very result oriented person. Uh, Tim, I know that was Tim or Tony was talking about the Vietnam. I must give a disclaimer. I am a former captain, United States Army during the Vietnam era. And I was very active in the part when he's talking about the draft and stopping the draft. So yes, one person can really get it started. And hey, Sue, I think you got this movement going and it can build and revolve and all of us can get our other groups involved. Um, that's about what I have to contribute and anything else I can do to help, just let me know. 
Absolutely. So I'm going to draw my email again because we, I have contacts with uh, organizers of students. Obviously, I can't do it myself, but um, I think, you know, we need to cooperate, but the youth also need to have their spaces where they talk about the issues that they care about, right. whether it's community causes for the common good, you know, distribution to mutual aid, which I hope to have kicked off by April and what have you. And really to think of this, not just as a one woman thing, but as a larger movement is key. So we have Bridget White, who is an amazing parent activist. Uh, Bridget, go ahead, take it away. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, first, I just wanted to say that this was amazing. Um, and I definitely agree on those last points. Number one, we do have to involve the youth. Um, that's why a lot of times they kind of uh, remove themselves because a lot of decisions are made for them and and we never seek out their opinion of how they want to do things, what do they want. So that's definitely key. Um, and, I, and I hope, um, I don't know if everybody's comfortable with exchanging information, but I hope there's a document later after this of, of the ideas that's been discussed because like Dr. Norman says, um, the speeches are good, but what, what are the next action steps? What is going to actually be done to get the youth involved? Is it uh, we take this to various colleges across the city? Um, is this um, going to the high schools? Um, um, we did PRN did a um, meet and greet a, a month or so ago, and we did have the students involved. We got questions directly from the students. So I think the education piece is really what's important because they don't realize that this affects them. Because if you have parents who don't vote, you're not going to think about voting. So who better to bring it than the ones in the community, the ones who's working with the youth. And that way we can really change the way things um, are currently done right now. Thank you. Agreed. So one of the things, if you're interested, and again, it's not Dr. Strat, it's other organizations that are trying to do pizza text parties. And we're trying to do that here at Harold Washington. Obviously it can't be for any specific candidates but just to motivate people to register to vote. And I'm also promoting this idea um, too, to, for people to, to vote early voting. But in terms of organizing and come together, uh, I, I had to learn this the hard way. And I'll give you an example. I was trying to have a wine and cheese party at the 25th Ward IPO. And, you know, it was Hess's grand idea, but nobody else wanted to have that idea, right? And so I ended up canceling the event. But what that taught me, again, even though I've been an organizer since I was 19, is that, we need to find who wants to organize with us and we got to do it together because maybe the wine and cheese party didn't fly, but Hey, let's do a pizza party at Harold Washington and, and talk about how we're going to get the youth agenda on there and have the youth lead the way. Right. Uh, and, and, and for us to midwife, I, I don't like this distinction of generations that are like, Oh, youth are the future. Yeah. Youth are the future, but I'm going to tell you what, as a mom of two young kids, I'm going to fight until the bitter end so that they have a clean planet so that they have the abundance they deserve. You know what I'm saying? But I want that for everybody, right? Um, so, okay, I know I'm proselytizing. I apologize, I can help myself. Uh, Joe, please, you, you got stack. Thanks, y'all. Um, I really appreciated the conversation. And um, hey, so you just said something in the last statement that, that kind of affirmed where I'm starting to think, but you know, like, I think a lot of voters that are younger are thinking about these grand big problems like global climate change, like the sustainability of the planet. And I don't know that that always wins them over to voting. Mm -hmm. Yes, some, but I think what the older generations have seen is that voting can have an immediate impact on something that's affecting their lives this minute. And I'm not sure that that idea is resonating with our younger voters yet. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder if part of motivating young people to vote is really, you know, election by election, pulling apart what does your older person do and how will their decisions affect the things you do every day? Yes, there is long-term impact, but what's the everyday actions? Your mayor, what are the everyday actions? Um, you know, the, the congressperson, you know, the state senator, we have to pull these apart and really say, this is why it matters to your everyday. And, you know, the decision they make tomorrow could mean your neighbor is no longer, um, you know, able to stay in the United States of America? You know, like, what, what's the impact? What are the heartstrings here so that people feel it? 
for sure. I, I love that. And I think you're, you're on point. Um, the, whatever the messaging is, one, it has to be true, but two, it has to be relevant to people's lives because yeah, I mean, I'm telling you as somebody who's trying to get legislation through the who gets elected really, really matters. Um, so anybody else on stack or want to uh, comment or ask questions of the panelists? So Lynette says demystifying the political process. Yes, yeah, super important. Also got some excellent networking ideas and uh, people inviting you to organize with them. Okay, so Bridget says these are the right now issues. If they are homeless or pushed out where they live, the education support that are not getting at their schools to read um, slash math and health disparities that may be affecting their families. For sure, 100%. And I really love the fact that Luis did that historical analysis of all the mental health care clinics that have closed. Mm -hmm. I have community members that need to take a bus for like two hours to get to a mental health institution. So it's really a problem. Um, beautiful. Is anybody else? Maybe somebody who hasn't had a chance to speak yet want to say something or maybe talk about their events or their organization. Oh, Barbara, please go ahead. Yeah, sister. I, think again, I was thinking about the young comment. Even when Joe was saying, some came to mind, and I don't know if we discussed it, we're talking about the generation, the different, for example, for the curriculum that young people are getting today compared to 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, that's an area that has to be strengthened. For example, I did not realize that young people are not getting a lot of civics and you know uh, government and grammar school and high school so that's an area that we can start that's our institution we're taxpayers we're over our children we have we have the responsibility as well have an input in those curriculum in which direction they're going and then before we leave out uh someone mentioned like how do we organize with your notes to carry this on and where do we go from here we uh, one other point i want to make sure all of you guys with the network and the social media. One thing I do want to emphasize right now, talking about city colleges, we have over 80,000 students. You know, we were doing the high school last month. Many of those kids, young people are not 18 yet, but these young people in city college, 80,000 who are eligible to be registered, not only registered, but getting out the vote. For sure. Okay. And one of the things I know I posted a couple of links, you can register online now, yeah. right? And so I've been pitching it on all my socials, um, texting people, you know, motivating people and, and um, but maybe even just having a conversation, y'all, with your neighbor, with people at the grocery store, we have to be bold if we're going right. to take this back. And I think you just get out of your comfort zone. I, I go canvassing almost every weekend. Um, uh, I'm starting to do text parties. There are different ways that you can participate without even having to leave your house, you know, and, and to be able to support. But just talking to people and, and finding out where their hurt is is really important, you know. Uh, and, and even if you don't agree ideologically, at least you understand where they're at. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think yeah. it's important for us to get out of our comfort zones and, and meet people where they're at. Um, I, I found that in the last three, four years, maybe, I've gotten really bold about how, where, where and how I talk to people. You know, I'm more compassionate. I don't I tend to be very fiery. That's like who I am. But just super compassionate. Listening is a revolutionary act too. Listen to people where they're coming from. Listen to the youth. Don't just assume, you know. Um, so I think all these things are important. So uh, somebody else? Yo, Tony, how are we going to do this, brother? Because I think, you know, me and you and uh, other people connected, we're going to have to get it going. And we only got two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, the, yep, we just, uh, there's plenty of ways to get um, involved. Um, if uh, whatever candidate that you're you're looking towards or interested in, their campaigns, you just all you got to do is Google them and their campaigns have, um, have canvassing and phone banking. And so um, the important thing is to first make the decision, you know, get informed. And if you do know who you who you want to support, is to reach out and and do it. Um, and of course, uh, early voting started yesterday. Uh, 
I took advantage of having a pretty slow day yesterday and I went and voted. So um, uh, it's it's easy to do, especially yeah, <laughs> especially this one. There was there was only Thanks. there was only two one items, uh, two items. one thing to vote on. <laughs> oh, for you, yeah. So if your your alder was decided, then you only yeah. get to vote for the mayor. So and, and if you go to to early voting, which I did for the first time because I was so afraid of who who was going to make this a runoff. Voting took, I kid you not, 30 seconds. Early voting is touchscreen. Right. And I hobbled to the polls because my ankle was hurt. I hobbled, took me like 30 minutes to get to the poll, but 30 seconds to finish, you know, cast yeah. the vote. So I it, mail in ballots too. You can also throw mail in ballots in. So really, even if you can't vote, encourage people to vote and uh, yeah, have the conversations. Uh, he says, even though they've been getting snatched right up, let's <laughs> see what? She's been not doing it too. Oh, by the way, I do take my children because I think it's important. Well, more my son, but it's important to like my son uh, has been with me in the, in the 25th ward and the 11th ward. And um, and I just it's amazing because he's 13. But because I drag him everywhere because he's grown up with me in the union work. He's gone to rallies, you know, speeches. He don't take the mic from me. But I love watching him speak with conviction. And my thing is, if a youth of 13 can get it, people can get it right. Um, Joy says she's a mail-in voter. All right, she put the ballot in the drop box. Excellent, beautiful, right. beautiful. Yo, Joe is another mail-in voter. <laughs> he, yo, but that's important. He says that he loves doing his research. I mean, and that's what because we can't say who to vote for. What I told my English one of two students is do your research, see what the the history has been for the mm -hmm. candidates that you're thinking about voting for. What's your track record, right? Mm -hmm. The information's out there. You just got to look for it. Um, uh, beautiful. Let me see what else. Other things, other comments. Uh, anybody else want to chime in or have questions for our wonderful panelists? You know, I'll just add, add in one piece. Um, when knocking at doors, uh, and it might seem intimidating, but oftentimes people are really happy to talk to you, yeah. and they're really excited about the youth getting involved on and and these calls uh, on the doors, even if they're uh, ardent. Um, supporters of the person that you're not going to vote for or the other person, they're going to sit and listen to you. So don't be afraid to knock on somebody's door and just to kind of say, hey, this is what I'm about. This is I'd like you to, you know, please consider it. You can't tell them, you know, you know, all you could say is just consider it. And then th that, that's non-threatening and you're able to kind of get your message across. So if you're thinking about knocking on doors, it's a great way to, to get to know people and to get to find out where people are. Because like you were saying before, when they were saying, when you're finding out about the neighborhood, I run a mutual aid group down here and uh, down in uh, Morgan Park in Beverly. And I've learned a lot about uh, what are the needs of our neighborhood. So we're going to be focusing on them. Not I wish I was from an eldermatic standpoint, but I'm doing it for me standpoint. Uh, so I didn't know that until I knocked on doors at people's doors until you said, is there any questions I can ask? Or is there anything I can help with? And then there, that there, now you may not do that as somebody, as somebody young, a young person, but you, what you could do is knock on the door and just say, hello, this is my piece of paper. Um, you know, I'm just this is a person I'm, I'm, I would like you to consider. And that's it. You know, you're not really uh, forced. You're not uh, being threatening to them, and therefore they're going to be fine with you. So don't think of it as a as a barrier, or you're going to um, that you're challenging them. It's just you're leaving the options open. So. And Tim, you and I got to connect, brother, because I really want to have that community based mutual aid, and I'm learning from you all on the ground. Right. I would love to hear about your experiences, how you did that. Um, I'm, I'm envisioning having student representation on you know and whatnot but that's awesome because yeah. what, what word isn't hurting right now right everyone needs support i don't care if it's north south west you name it people need help you know i, I love that uh, so we got five minutes left uh i don't know if you panelists want to do a parting shot or oh we got more people coming in or people have more questions we've had about 20 people on and off come and go um including ambria who just did a beautiful job uh luis Let's hear from you. Um, oh, you got ahead of class. Okay, hermano, thank you so much. Have an awesome class. Yeah, we don't want to make you late. Luis, let, let's connect some more, yeah? Yeah, I'll follow up uh, also with Peyton. He, um, I don't know if you know Peyton, but he also wanted to follow up 
as well to maybe look forward to what we may do before the before the uh, elections end. But by by all means, let's do that text pizza party. There's no reason that text pizza party can't happen at all the city colleges. You yes. know, and and um, you know, I think that'll be one great way to connect. And I know the People's Response Network. You can I, I you can have my information to to connect and others. Um, so Peyton is our. Oh yeah, right, right. I met Peyton before. He was very awesome during our um, contract campaign. Super dope. All right, thank you, thank you again, y'all. Let, let's give let's give this young brother a, a huge round of applause for being bold and speaking. You can take off your mics and please, I beautiful job, Luis. Excellent. Yeah. I'll be emailing out the recording to everybody yeah. as well as the chat and any information that might be helpful. I'll try and parse that out so you don't have to muddle through the the whole thing. But let's just do parting shots. We have three minutes and. Listen, I, I just want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I know you're very busy. You have lives. And I, I cannot thank you enough as a college professor, as a mother, as a community member from Canaryville, just to say thank you, because this is how we build it. Right now, we may have 20, but tomorrow we may have 40. And the next time we might have 60. And that, that's how we go together, you know. Um, so let's maybe do a little parting shot and then thank you. But thank you truly, all of you. Um, Barbara, you want you want to start because you know you're my mentor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just want to close with saying, is there a way with the pizza, uh, uh, whatever party? How can we? Is there a way that we get information to invite all the city college open up to all the students, or should it be from campus to campus? Because if oh. we're gonna do if we're gonna do something, you have to almost plan it this week if you want to kick it off for next week. And we had to think about what a budget would be and how would we do that. Right. So you don't have to worry about the budget. That's already budgeted by the organization that's doing it. But the thing is this, we have to be careful that they're not election year one. Um, I think my thing is I told them we're going to have our text party if the students want to do this next week. So we have time to advertise it. The other right. college, I don't know, if Tony, if you can reach out to other people at the different colleges, I can try to because it would just be a question of reserving the room, making sure that there's no electioneering. And if people right. do election year, do it off campus somewhere, somewhere close, right. right? If they want to push for a particular candidate, whoever it is, they can do it. Just it have to be out of the city colleges. Um, the, the reason that having one event texting or partying, partying, I mean, pizza party is because the colleges are so far apart. Right. That's right. So yeah. virtual, virtual makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, but if you do want to have that communal spirit of sh breaking bread, which I think is important, then it would have to be college by college or even the satellite colleges if people are interested in that. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if anybody else has any other ideas, but definitely would like to get the, the youth. Um, and and there, look, Luis left his number too, Barbara. Go ahead and grab that. I'll be sending all this contact information. But okay, okay. I'll shut up. Sorry, I do talk a lot. Um, how about we That's just it. go in order? Uh, Tony and Mano, you want to go next? I would just, uh, you know, for those who are hopefully you know you're you're looking at what what is happening here with regards to the mayoral campaign is uh you know the it, it is very it is rare when you have two very different visions especially yeah. for local politics um yeah. there there tends to be each politician saying the same thing and um being it being about personalities um this is clearly not the case. This is two candidates with very different visions for where Chicago should go. And for that reason alone, um, it's worthwhile to pay attention to it. Amen. And like I said, yo, be good students and do your research. If you're not sure, hit me up after, after work. <laughs> All right, thank you. Hey, gotta give it up to my brother, Tim. Last parting shot. Uh, yeah, I thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. And I thank you for, for the people who took out the time to listen. Uh, yeah, the the having the, the, the two candidates running for mayor is is really important to make sure that they align with the, your values and how you want to see the future. Uh, and I think that it's important then to try to support them in any manner you can. And then, you know, try to get your votes, try to get your friends out to vote, try to get them to, to come out there and say, hey, you know, what? let's all get together and vote and then go to a movie or do it as like, hey, if you want to have a date, why don't you go on a date and knock on some doors or something? I think it'd be kind of fun. Um, <laughs> so I think, you know, try to make it kind of fun, because honestly, when you start talking to people, it's going to be fun. So so go out, vote and spread the good news. So.
Hey, beautiful, beautifully said. Yo, dating while voting. I didn't even think about that. What a phenomenally revolutionary idea, right? <laughs> Canvassing is also great. Listen, thank you so much. If you want to get connected and be more active, please feel free to reach out to us. Be happy to share any information that we have for you. And just want to thank everybody again. I think this has been a great, you know, event. Hopefully we'll grow it and, and uh, have the, the highest voter turnout that we can because your vote does matter. Every vote matters. Um, so thank you all. I, I and, and you all have an amazing day. All right. I'm just going to stop recording if you want to keep chatting, but I really appreciate you all. You all did just beautifully. Uh, how do I do this? Or maybe not. Thanks, Jesus, for putting this together. <laughs>